Hey everyone, I hope you all have had a wonderful day. Um, just a little side note, um, we're, we are going to do chapter 13 in the Do It Afraid uh, Bible study. But I just want to give you a little insight. Most of the time when I record these, it's at the end of my day. And my day starts really, really early in the mornings. And then I've been at work and I've talked and I've looked at really small print. So please forgive me if um, sometimes I'm pausing, trying to get my eyes to focus because they are very tired or if my voice is a little bit more raspy or if I have to stop and take a drink of uh, something. Just know that it is the end of my day and I'm, I'm a little tired. So um, forgive me, but you know, this is very important and um, I'm learning a lot. I hope you're learning a lot. So let's jump into chapter 13. And this chapter is called Learning to Be Secure and Confident. And the quote from Teddy Roosevelt that she used to start this chapter is, each time we face our fears, we gain strength, courage, confidence in the doing. And it's true. It, I always call it it's muscle memory because the more you do it, the more you can endure, the more reps you can do. Your body's like, oh yeah, we've done that before. And over time, it just becomes easier and easier. And if you're working out, then you know you do more reps or add more weight or, you know, more time on the bike or walking or whatever it is. It's the same in whatever we're doing in life. If it's with our work or at home or whatever it is that you're doing afraid, um, stepping out. And the more you step take steps forward, you are going to gain strength, courage, and confidence. And the first question in this, uh, in chapter 13, what does it mean in practical ways for you to face your fears? Well, it's just kind of what I said. You got to put your faith in God. You got to pray. And then you got to get up and take a small step at a time until you fully face your fear and it becomes no longer a fear. And as I said, practice makes perfect. And the more you do it, the easier it becomes, the stronger and more confident you become. How do facing your fears give you strength, courage, and confidence? Well, the main thing that anytime we face fear, because we know that fear comes from Satan, it disarms him. It takes his power away from you. Now, he's going to try to attack you harder and in every direction. And then he's going to come at you with other things. But it, it just disarms him. When you take that step, his hold over you, it, it just releases. So, um... Like I, I said before, once we face our fears, it will go away and it's he will flee from you. If you tr put your trust and faith in the Lord and you rebuke him in the name of the Lord, he will flee from you. James 4, 7 um, is where I get that. It says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. A lot of times, um, people will misquote that, but it is submit to the Lord. A lot of times people say, you know, rebuke the devil and re resist the devil and he will flee from you. But you have to submit to God first, and that's when he will flee from you. The next question, do you struggle with fear? Like Autumn describes a fear of being open and vulnerable to others. This is from the story at the beginning of chapter 13 about the lady named Autumn, who was 
really a bubbly person and she was trusting but she'd been burned several times and it kind of caused her to be cautious and kind of withdrawn herself because she just didn't want to open herself up to be hurt again. So it says, do you struggle with that fear as Autumn described, a fear of being open and vulnerable to others? Can you relate to feeling anxious about sharing matters of the heart? If you have something in your past and you're afraid to share it because you think they're gonna judge you or flee from me because of it, um, how does her story inspire you? Um, I've always been an open book. Um, I couldn't be that way at home because my mother used any little morsel of information to twist any way she could to use it against you later. But, um, and, and I have been burned by friends. We, I think we all probably have. Um, but I'm still going to be open because I feel anything that we've gone through in life, good, bad, or in the middle, even being burned by a friend or a family member like me, we can use that as part of our testimony and anything that has hurt us can be used to help someone else. So don't close yourself off like Autumn wanted to do. Be open. Be honest. It is the best policy. And if people don't like you for who you are, who or what you might have done in your past, that's on them, not on you. Share your story because someone needs to hear it and it's going to help someone. I promise you. In Revelations 12, 11 says... And they overcame and conquered him because of the blood of the lamb and because of the word of their testimony. For they did not love their life and renounce their faith even when faced with death. And it says in Revelations 12, 11, gives autumn courage. How can this verse give you courage? Well, the world's going to come against you because the world is sin. And sin comes from Satan. So, we know from the word in the Bible, many times it says that they're going to hate you because you love me, says the Lord. And they're going to attack you. Satan knows your weaknesses. So, he's going to use that and use people here on earth to come against you to try to break you down and steal your joy, steal your plan and purpose. Don't let him. He's just a liar. Those that come against you, stand up. Because you know what's right and wrong as a Christian. And if you waver in that, those that are lost are not going to be judged as harshly as those that know the word and bend and break to the world. We know that with the month we've just come through. I mean, there's so many people that I know that are Christians that I cringe when I see their post. It's like you are bending to immorality that God himself has such an issue with. And when we bend and break to the world and we don't stand up for Christ, we're going to be judged more harshly than those that don't know the truth. So do not bend, do not break. And those that come against us, we will be redeemed. In the end, we will be redeemed. We may not like things on earth and we may not like the attacks against us, but I assure you, that we will be redeemed by the Lord. The fear fighting truths, these are the keys in chapter 13 um, that you need to believe and apply to your life. Feeling, feelings of insecurity and lack of confidence are symptoms of fear and they are rooted in 
not feeling loved. This is true. I've been there and done that. Um, I felt like that the only, you know, I could toe the line. No matter what I did, I finally had to realize my mother was going to feel the way she did about me because she did it to everybody. It wasn't just me. You can't give what you don't have. She didn't love herself. She couldn't give love to others. Other people don't have the same per perspective of her, but they don't realize that how she was to their face was fake. I had to endure the good, the bad, and the ugly every single day. So it made me be deeply rooted in insecurity. Only when I completely surrendered that whole situation in September of 2019 did the Lord start the healing process in me, the elevation in my ministry and life and every aspect of it. She was going to be who she was until she died. But the Lord had a plan and purpose for my life and, and I needed to move forward. She was never going to move forward. She was where she was and that was it. He needed me for a different plan and purpose and I just couldn't stay marred in that. So I am no longer insecure. I know that I am loved by the most high God and it makes no difference what the rest of the world feels about me. Does it hurt? Yes, but I just keep moving forward. And I highly recommend you do that. They will keep you from accomplishing and enjoying all that God has for you. She, she was miserable and misery loves company. And if they see you happy and thriving, they don't, they want to tear you down any way they can. Negativity tries to kill positivity and don't let them do that. The enemy tells you lies about who you are and what kinds of problems you have. If you believe those lies, they become realities in your life. And that's where she was at. The devil twisted and tangled her from the time she was a little girl. And there was, she just did not have the spiritual maturity to ever untangle that. And I'm thankful to God every day that he helped pull me out of that pit and that murky and muddy mess and untangle all of that lies and deception. Knowing and believing the truths of God's word will empower you to combat the lies of the enemy. And I am here to tell you, I know that is the truth. I've lived it in my own life. If you grow up in an atmosphere of fear, you will struggle with various types of fear and may need to learn what kind of life God wants you to have. Study his word so you will realize that he wants you to live with peace, joy, love, strength, and stability instead of fear. And that, that one statement alone sums up the first 40 some odd years of my life that I had to overcome. The key to overcoming insecurity and a lack of confidence is to place your faith and trust in God and his love for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Then as the Holy Spirit guides you, you begin to do things you have been afraid to do before. God will meet all your needs in his perfect timing, so you need to trust in him. When you take an action that is filled with when you take an action that is filled with faith, you gain more faith. It's just like muscles. The more you use them, the more toned they get, the stronger they get. Being a Christian does not mean that you will never face difficulties. It's quite the opposite. Because the devil's coming for you. When you're living in sin, and he's got you right where he wants you. He doesn't really bother you. 
It's when you start denying him and you start changing. He's going to attack you with everything, but it's so worth it because living for the Lord versus living for the world has eternal benefits, but it also has benefits to us now. All things work for good. Even when the devil attacks, God can turn it and use it for good. But it does mean you will always trust God to take care of you, and he will. Taking courage in the word. Now, there's a lot of verses, so be patient with me. So I can, I've got them tabbed, um, so we can get these verses. The it says, what does Psalms 40, verse 1 and 2, reveal about God's heart toward you and the way he wants to help you? Verse 1, I waited patiently and expectantly for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the horrible pit. This is where I was at brought me up out of the horrible pit of uh, turbulent destruction out of the murky clay, and he set my feet upon a rock, steadying my footsteps and establishing my path. Thank you, Jesus, all day long. He is a loving father. He is the father that's not going to lie to you, let you down, mislead you, misguide you. He is going to do everything right for you if you follow him. He wants to help us. He wants to bring us out of our messes that we get into. He wants to heal us and bless us. The next verse comes from John 15, 11, in these next few verses, it says, what do these verses teach you about how God wants you to live? How does he want us to live? And let's get over here. John 15, 11. I have told you these things so that my joy and delight may be in you and that your joy may be made full and complete and overflowing. He wants us, even when we're going through the storms of life, to look around and find something about our day and, and our life to be joyful of. He knows that we're going to go through trials and storms and sickness and all kinds of things. But there's always things to be joyful of, even if it's, I got through it another day. I survived it. I had food to eat, clothes to wear, a home to come home to, running water. It's these things that are so basic and simple that we take for granted that he wants us to be thankful for and be aware of. It's very easy to thank him when it's something big and grand but it's in the little things. Every night, I'm like, thank you, Lord, for air conditioning. Because I detest the heat and humidity of an Alabama summer. And I am so thankful that my Lord and Savior gave me air conditioning. And um, so if nothing else, I got through the day, and I have air conditioning, and I have Lucy. The you got to find the joy. No matter how bad your day is, there's always something to be joyful about. And in John 16, 24, Until now, you have not asked the Father for anything in my name, but now ask and keep on asking and you will receive it so that your joy may be fulfilled and complete. Now, we don't know what day and time that he's going to answer us. And he may not answer us exactly how we ask for things. But whatever is a part of his will and his plan, then he's going to provide when we need it, how we need it, 
where we need it. And I've learned in my own life, it's better than what I could have ever asked for. But there's the more detailed you are, the better off you're going to be. So when you're praying for something, be very specific. Our Lord loves details. So be very specific in everything that you ask for. Because he wants to give us our desires of our heart. John 17, 13. But now I am coming to you and I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may experience my joy made full and complete and perfect within them, filling their hearts with my delight. Well, he wants us to delight in him and he wants to fulfill us each and every day. In Hebrews, I think that's the one, yes. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Why should you not be afraid? Let your character, your moral essence, and your inner mature nature be from the love of money. Shun the greed and be financially and ethical. Being content with what you have. For he says, I will never under any circumstance desert you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support, nor will in any degree leave you helpless, nor I will, nor will I forsake or let you down or relax my hold on you. So what he is saying, we may be going through something, but... He is our protector, provider, and encourager. Sometimes I hear people, I just can't do any better. I, I'm stuck. We're only stuck because you won't take that fear out of the gutter. There are so many ways and so many people that are willing to help, but you got to be willing to help yourself first. You got to take that first step and then God's going to see that and he's going to send people. Don't say, well, God has forsaken me because he hasn't. You've got to get off your rear end and do something first. Just like the Israelites and, and uh, crossing over the Red Sea. Oh, we're going to drown. Da, 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 da. Have that faith to put that toe in the water had they not, then they either would have drowned or they would have just died right there. Don't be an Israelite. I did a sermon on that one time. What should have been an 11 day journey took 40 years. Don't be an Israelite. I, I won't get on that soapbox because <laughs> when I do, it, it stays a while. Um, James 4, verse 7. Let's see here. There it is. Oh, wait. I skipped one. Um, according to John 14, 6, who is Jesus to us? Jesus said to him, I am the only way. To God, I am the real truth and the real life. No one comes to the Father but through me. He is the truth, the way, and the life. And he is the only way to the Father. No other. We can't buy our way into heaven. We can't do works of good. Only through Jesus can we get there. Now we'll go over here to James. James 4, 7. So submit to the authority, submit to the authority. This was the first one I read to you. Submit to the authority of God, resist the devil, stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. That is so important, so important. 
And it says, the keys to getting the devil to flee from you. First, you have to come under the authority of God. And resist him. Stand firm against him in the name of the Lord. And he will flee from you. The light will cast out darkness. He flees from light. When you walk in the love and light of Christ, he will flee from you. Because it, it's the things he hates. The section, Use Your Faith, includes Hebrew 11.1, 1, fill in the blanks. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's what faith's all about. We don't always see the full staircase, but we take one step at a time to get there. And according to James 4, 2. You are jealous and covet what others have, and your lust goes unfulfilled, so you murder. I just did a sermon on the set. I'm doing the seven deadly sins. Lust, jealousy, envy, greed, all of that is sin, sin, sin. And it will never fulfill you. So you murder. You are envious and cannot obtain the object of your envy. So you fight the battle. You do not have because you do not ask it of the Lord. I know so many people that are this way and it's very, very sad. Um, I feel for them because they think that their value comes from stuff or status and it just doesn't. It, it, they will never be fulfilled. So, um, ask God if it is in his will for you to have these desires and be okay if he does or doesn't give it to you. But, um, Remember always that lust and coveting and greed are sins. And um, Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams, according to His power that is that at work that is at work within us. And the question was in Ephesians three twenty. It says that God is able to do what? Well, He can do super abundantly more than we can imagine or ask for. As I said before, he wants to give us the desires of our heart and we have not because we ask not. We'll ask and be specific, but be prepared that it may come in a form that you didn't expect, but it's gonna be awesome because he always wants to bless us above and beyond what our simple minds can comprehend that's what we go wow when he does these things it's like oh lord thank you thank you lord because he is abundantly blessing us and let's see we're on verse 12 here mark eleven twenty four. For this reason, I am telling you, whatever things you ask for in prayer, in accordance with God's will, and that's the way you always should pray, if it is in your will, believe with confident trust that you have received them and they will be given to you. If it is in his will, then just know that it's going to come at some point. And it will be in his perfect plan and timing. 
And the question was, how does this verse encourage you? Remember that scripture never says how much time will pass between the time the person asks God for something in faith and the time that they actually receive it. If it is his will, um, how does it indicate God will answer? Well, like I said, no matter how long it takes, he will answer us in his will, timing, and plan and purpose. Ephesians 3, 17 through 19 So that Christ may, may dwell in your hearts through your faith and may you have, having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love, be fully capable of comprehending with all the saints, God's people, the width and length and height and depth of his love, fully experiencing their amazing endless love, and that you may come to know practically through personal experience, the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled up throughout your being to all the fullness of God, so that you may have the richest experience of God's presence in your life, completely filled and flooded with God himself. And the question is, as you read Paul's prayer for the Ephesians, what's the most important thing to him for them to know and experience? That, that we are rooted in our faith and God loves us in abundance and he wants to bless us. So um, that's what I got from those verses. In Psalms 4.8, how does it comfort you? Salvation belongs to the Lord. Let's see. That's not the right verse. In peace and tranquil heart, I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, makes me dwell in safe and confident trust. When we have trust in the Lord, no matter what we're going through, worry is never the answer. The answer is to go humbly and pray to the Lord and put that, lay it down. Lay it down at the foot of the cross and don't pick it back up. Don't hold on to the hem. Just let God do it. Let him handle it. When you pick it back up, it's telling the Lord you do not have full faith that he's going to handle the problem. I did that a lot in my life. When I finally just laid it down and said, I'm tired of carrying this. I can't do it anymore. Here you go, Lord. That's when everything changed. And his peace lives within us. So we should never worry. We should have full trust in his Word in the Bible and his promises. In Psalms 23, 4. Even though I walk through the sunless valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod to protect. Your staff to guide. They comfort and console me. It says, what do these verses teach us that we can depend on when we go through trouble? He is with us, he is our protector, and he is our comforter. And that's why we should um, rest in his promises. And the, the more you do that, the stronger you will be and the quicker you are to give him all the things that are bothering you. In Isaiah 41.10, do not fear anything, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. 
Be assured I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous right hand, a hand of justice, power, victory of salvation. I love that. I love it. I love it. And, um, he doesn't want us to ever fear because when we become Christians, we've already won all the wars because we have our salvation and we have our victory. I remember one year in Bible school, it was, um, victory in Jesus. And it had this person on the, you know, all of the stuff that was running like the Olympics, except they were running toward Christ. And, you know, we had the little medals and everything. It was so cute. And I mean, that was like 40 years ago. And I still remember it that I have victory in Jesus. Psalms, um, 37, 1 through 3. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I have all of these tabs, so I'm taking the tabs off as I go so I can see them better. <laughs> oh, we're getting there, y'all. We're getting there. Psalms 37, 1 through 3. Do not, and it's in all capitals, do not worry because of evildoers, nor be envious of towards wrongdoers. For they will wither quickly like the grass and fade like the green herb. Trust, rely on, and have confidence in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed securely on his faithfulness. Well, it says, when we face difficulties, what are we to do? And what do we get from those verses? We are to trust, rely on, Wait on God and know he is there to protect us, vindicate us, and punish those that come against us. And so many times we think, we just want to see somebody get what's coming to them. And I have a very quick temper, so I am one of these that's like, I want vindication now. I want to see them punished. I want to see them suffer. But God is not us. He is more gracious and he is more merciful. So sometimes in life, we may not get to see the vindication, but it will come. There is a certain uh, football player that once alleged, allegedly <laughs> murdered his wife. Um, he said he didn't do it. All the evidence. I don't think any of us think that he didn't do it. He did go to jail, but not for that. Um, but he is dead now. And on the day of his death, I wrote on my social media, this person is getting their actual justice. And we all know who killed his wife now. He alone with everyone else. And I think this person completely convinced himself, allowing the devil to convince him that he didn't do it. And he, he faced final judgment. And we may not find it here on earth, but we will get it at some point. Our last scripture comes from Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. What can you count on God to do when you face difficulties? But now, this is what the Lord your Creator says, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you from captivity. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. For I am your Lord, God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I have given Egypt to the Babylonians 
as your ransom. And it is exchanged for you. I think what Jesus did on the cross is God's ultimate gift to us. And people tend to forget what Christ did for us. It's obvious in the world today. Don't be one of those that has forgotten what Christ did on the cross for us and what God gave up. And paid such a heavy ransom for us. And, and it says, what can you count on uh, from God to do when you face difficulties? He redeems us. He's with us through all the storms of life. Or good days and bad days and in between days. And he will not let us drown or burn. Moving forward in freedom section, how does fear produce insecurities and low levels of confidence? Well, it paralyzes you to where you don't take the steps uh, forward. You just stay and it's like, I once heard a preacher talk about staying put and never moving forward or backwards. It's like stagnant water. And if you've never smelt stagnant water, it stinks so bad. Water has to be kept moving or else once it gets like a film, a sludgy film and moldy kind of, and it just stinks. We don't want to stay in that stagnant, stinky place. Why do insecurities and lack of confidence keep people from accomplishing much? Well, fear, failure, rejection, those things, that, that scares people. And uh, if that's all you've ever known in life, then it's hard to move forward. But when you see people like that, encourage them. Give them a, a devotional. Uh, Jesus is calling is, is fabulous. Um, and have them do that every day. And the more they stay in the word and, and little by little, that's one way of helping people to see that God is for them and they can take those steps. They may fall down a hundred times, but get back up a hundred and one times. How does unconditional love help people overcome insecurity and lack of confidence it's what we talked about before the more you do it the stronger you get that's in anything we do in life and strength gives us confidence and when we see that we can do it we'll take another step and take another step and eventually we're way way down the line from where we were and um what kind of lies has the devil convinced you that are true about yourself and how are they adversely affecting your life? Well, now I know better than to listen to him. And I have a strong network of people in my life that remind me if I have a, a step back, who I am in Christ. And be that for other people. When you hear them say negative things about themselves, remind them who they are in Christ. Um, you know, I was told I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't thin enough. I wasn't pretty enough. I just wasn't enough. I know now I am enough. And if I don't like something about myself, it's up to me to change it, but not for the world to tell me to change it. If God wants to change me, he will let me know what I need to change. So just walk in knowing who you are in Christ and that you are enough. This one hit close to home. Did, did you grow up in an atmosphere of fear? Yes. If so, what type of fear have you struggled with as a result of being raised in that environment? Um, I always thought, you know, no one's ever gonna love me. I'm never going to be enough. I'm, I, I'm just lies. It's just lies. My mother 
put her fears, she put that on me to make herself, she cast everything she felt about herself onto me to tear me down. And deep down, it has nothing to do with me. It has to do with other elements of her life. Don't be the person that breaks another person's spirit. Our words can heal or hurt. Make sure that you are walking in the truth, telling the truth, God's truth. Heal the broken. And if someone gets mad at you about something, as long as you know you're walking in the truth and what God's standard is, that's okay. But don't just hurt people to be hurting people. Don't put people down just to be putting them down. According to the fifth paragraph in the section, stop listening to the lies. What are two keys to developing a loving and trusting relationship with God? And how can you grow from your relationship with him? We must know the truth. So you've got to study the Bible to know God's truth. And to receive it, experience it, and focus on the good that he has for us. And um, that's how we grow spiritually mature. We got to study. We got to pray. We got to trust the Lord and do it afraid. Step out of your comfort zone. In what ways do you need to make an effort to overcome insecurity by doing something you haven't done before? Trusting God as you do it. First and foremost, pray about it for his guidance and discernment and strength. Then take a first step and then do some research. If it's a trip you want to take, a job you want to take, going back to school, learning something new, whatever it is, there is so much research about everything in the world. Pray about it and then research it. And then get out there and do it if that's what you feel called to do. Never be afraid to ask God for what you want and need. He will answer you in his wisdom in accordance with his timing and plan. What do you need to ask him for right now? Um, you know, I, I'm in a really good place as far as lots, the things that used to um, hold me back and hold me down. Now, it's if I want to go somewhere or do something, I pray over it. And if I have a peace about it, then I know that that's God telling me it's okay. If I want to buy something, I pray over it. Um, and there's many times that I don't have a peace about it or he... Gives me that tug of like, no, not now. So those are the things that I pray about because I trust and I want to walk in the faithfulness. But, you know, it may be that you want to go back to school or you want to change your relationship or take on a new job or buy something or whatever it is, pray about it. Ask for guidance and discernment. You will get that. Um, how can you actively expect and be on the lookout for God's love to manifest in your life? Our lives are so busy. Stop and breathe. Stop and be still long enough for the Lord to communicate with you. Block out everything else for a few minutes here and there. And look around. We get so tunnel vision in this crazy, chaotic world, which is what the devil wants. He wants us to be so distracted at all times that we focus on our problems more than our blessings. Stop each day and take a breath and reconnect with the Lord and look around at your blessings. What are some situations in which you have trusted God in the past and seen him move in a powerful way for you 
Are you trusting him right now? Um, my health is was bad uh, back in, in 2018. Lots of things in my life were broken. My health was bad. I prayed about it. He has healed me. That's been uh, several times in my life. And he's weeded out the people that didn't need to be in it and brought the people that did and things. And um, so, he, like I said, he has done impossible things and healed me in ways that I never thought was, and even some ways I thought I was healed from that I wasn't, and he healed that through other things. And uh, he's brought peace into my life that I had never had before. And I tell you, once you get that peace and you sleep soundly every night, anything that disturbs your peace, I don't care if it is a parent or a child or a sibling or whatever it is, you will guard your peace with everything in you and you will eliminate and you'll do whatever it takes to keep your peace. And so don't be afraid to defend your peace. Um, turning my attitude from a negative to a positive because I grew up in a negative atmosphere. So changing that negative to a positive was huge for me. The last question, how has God been with you through difficulties in the past and how does this give you confidence that he will be with you through hard times that you may face in the future? Um, he helped me get through life dealing with my mother um, when times was hard during COVID and I was working from home and being threatened, if I didn't get the vaccine, I would be fired. Um, that was very trying. Um, times in my life where I had health problems, bad relationships, loss of friendships, um, years ago, losing a job. Uh, I made it through all of those. And I've come out better every single time. That is God. That is God staying true to his word. That I'll never take anything from you that I don't replace it at least 10 times better. And He, if he does it for me, he will do it for you. Keep this in mind. Do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you or overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. Overcome fear to the point that you feel secure and confident does not mean that you will never have troubles, but that God will bring you through them to a place of safety. God says that when you go through difficulties, he will be with you. The going through is not enjoyable. I can, I can sit here and say that all day long. It is painful. It is sometimes dark and emotional. But the promises of coming out on the other side of the problem gives you hope, confidence, and security. I hope that you got a lot out of chapter 13. I have, I look forward to um, chapter 14 starts part three of uh, Do It Afraid, which is mindset for walking in freedom from fear. So thank you all that have encouraged me and told me how much they're enjoying this. Uh, I hope that you're getting as much out of it as I am. And until next time, may God bless you all.